Okay, I see it is officially 11 o'clock, so we can kick off. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday and welcome to part three of this webinar series. It is going to be really, really awesome, the things that you're going to be seeing today. I hope you've had a great week thus far and yeah, looking forward to the weekend tomorrow in the conclusion of March 2021. Damn, that's like a quarter of the year just gone very quickly, but let's just jump into it. All right, so for you or for the users that have not been or missed a part of the series, don't worry, I got you covered. This is just going to give you an overview of exactly what we've been covered thus far in part one and part two. So I thought of putting together a webinar series focused on the road project life cycle from tender to inception stage right up to construction and as built. So it was a three part webinar series today being part three. And we looked at the challenges based at the bidding, design, and construction management monitoring phase. So it was a really, really content-packed series, and today is none different. And of course, today we're going to be looking at purely the construction stage, how you can manage your project better, how you can connect your teams better, how you can use 4D construction simulation to be much more on point with your construction scheduling and monitoring. And of course, the technologies used on the right hand side, you can see it was quite a stack. InfraWorks, Civil 3D, Devotech IDAS, Navisworks, ArcGIS, Map3D, Docs, BIM Collaborate Pro. And today we're going to be touching on Build and Navisworks. As we've seen, there's a lot of users that uh, hit up our YouTube channel. So we just remind you to share, comment, like, and of course, subscribe. If you know a buddy that has missed this webinar, the recordings are always uploaded here. So if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you will get a notification as soon as it is uploaded. So feel free, hit the bell icon or go and have a look at our webinar and you will be connected always. And I will be your host for this webinar series as I've been. I am Shua Vienus. I'm the BIM Technical Specialist for Civil Infrastructure and Mining here at Baker Baines in South Africa. I hold a BTEC degree in civil engineering currently. I'm thinking of doing my master's soon. And of course, uh, in conjunction with my current role, I am a civil consultant and also a certified instructor, as well as a champion of BIM for civil infrastructure. A uh, fun fact about me is I enjoy the beach, deep sea fishing, powerlifting, as well as archery. A little bit about us, Baker Baines, uh, we work on these four segments, as you can see here, survey and design hardware consultancy, design software consultancy, business process improvement, as well as blended learning. If you want to put that in terms of logos or partners, you can see we partner with Topcon and Leica for the scan to boom services that we render, Topcon being on the construction side, so if you're on a construction site, that is your go-to hardware. If you're more interiors or architectural base, you'll definitely go for Leica. In terms of the civil engineering tools that we use, I am very fond of IDAS, which is the powerhouse that makes civil 3D that's much more better. And it also has our South African standards incorporated. So it's really, really cool. We've got ClearEdge 3D as well, which uses geometry extraction technologies to extract geometry automatically from point cloud data, which reduces modeling time about 70%, which is quite amazing. We are also list listed on the Autodesk services marketplace as a provider, as well as a service provider selected by Autodesk. We are B level one. And of course, we partner with a lot of different technologies, the best one being CAD Learning. So if you want to learn on the go, CAD Learning is an online portal with up to 50 plus Autodesk titles. So whether you want to learn Civil 3D, Advanced Steel, Revit, InfraWorks, Map 3D, Vehicle Tracking, Inventor, all of those are the pre-recorded classes that you can do with accompanying exercises. So really, really cool. And if you are more segment focused, we focus on building civil, structural, energy, process plant, manufacturing. Okay, so now that you know a little bit about me and a little bit about Baker Baines, let's jump into the topic at hand. So today's session, we always start off with a picture 
I always like to create the perspective so that you know why we're doing what we're doing. So we're going to look at the industry perspective. Thereafter, we're going to jump directly into the demo and then hang around for the closing because we always have some key takeaways, how we can help you. And of course, if any questions pop up in your mind throughout the webinar, please fire them away in the chat box. I will get to them at the end. Okay, so let's have a look at the industry perspective, how professionals are currently doing things and the challenges that are currently faced. So first of all, in the construction phase of a typical road project, construction drawings, you would normally have three sets that are given to the contractor by the civil consultant. Site meetings will be held weekly to monitor progress, uh, to gauge design versus construction. Also, work on site will be claimed from the contractor weekly in terms of contractor claim certificates submitted to the consultant for approval so that they can get, get paid accordingly. And then, of course, once the road has been completed, you would need to create as bills and hand this over to the client so that they have an as well representation of the construction element. And then, of course, the road is open to the public. Now, the challenges that are currently faced at this stage, if you're doing it the generic way, first of all, communication. I think this goes across the board. Between consultants and construction teams are normally blurred. Sometimes we might not issue the right drawings or the contractor might not be using the latest revision and it kind of makes a mess on site, so we need to avoid that. Also, the design for verse construction programs they're not really close. Uh, sometimes they are quite far apart or not aligned correctly. So to gauge the progress in terms of your project schedule becomes a very, very tight task. Also, sometimes if you're working on a remote site, re receiving of information quite late normally happens. It could be due to internet issues. It could be due to just lack of communication, coming back to point one, or there could be various factors there, okay? And then this also results or has a compound effect on tracking of meeting minutes and action items. So when we have, when I was on a construction site, I used to always have these weekly site meetings. We used to agree who needs to do what, but come back the next week, those items are not followed up and addressed, which is quite frustrating. And it makes it very, very tough in terms of time pressure. Of course, documenting and submission of quality assurance checks also becomes a problem, especially if you're doing it on paper or clipboards. They can get lost, they can get wet due to rain sometimes, they could be misplaced. Uh, all of those things are typically on a construction site. And of course, the most cumbersome task will be the generation of the actual asphalt itself. It's quite a process. So I'm going to show you how we can address all of that. So let's jump right into it. So this was our project brief from the start of this webinar series. Again, if you missed part one and two, they are all on our YouTube channel. I'll have more details at the end of the webinar. So we were required to design a 3.2 kilometer road, one lane in each direction. It was situated in uh, the KZN South Coast in South Africa. There was an existing wheel track, so the route was clearly defined, or we could use that route for a reference for our route. And then, of course, we looked at the bid proposal where we created a bid, we submitted it for construction, and we got the tender, we did the design, and now we are on the construction phase. Meaning that the design, as a consultant, you applied for it, you got the tender, you won the tender, you generated the tender documents in conjunction with the tender drawings that was submitted or advertised, the contractor won it, the contractor got appointed, and now they are busy building the road in simple terms. So today in part three, we are looking purely at the construction stage, monitoring the construction as well as closing off the project in a really good way. So where we stopped previously in part two of the webinar series, for those that have missed it, we used the Autodesk Construction Cloud, ACC, where we created a project on the cloud system and we added teams on that, which helped us to collaborate with the surveyor, the GIS professional, as well as the stormwater and roads designer. We set that up quite nicely. It worked pretty good. It kept the site and design teams connected. We used Civil 3D and Devotech IDAS for detailed road design and stormwater. So 
you can see the snapshots on the right hand side we created a really good stormwater network for our road and if you look at closely those are also african pipe catalogs in this case we use rockler okay also the design standards that need to be ap applied to your road we did that quite good in terms of the cover the slopes the velocities all of those and then of course we've got the quantities and so on from there. So it was a very detailed type of uh, webinar. And then of course, we produced the construction drawing. So that's where we stopped. So now we are going into the project where the actual road is going to be constructed and completed. So the first step now will be to add the construction team onto the project so that our design or consulting firm can be in constant communication with them. So I'm going to show you how we can add the contractor or the construction team to our project. Okay, so this is our project that we set up previously. You can see it has the location data, it has the weather, it has everything that you would need generally from a project management perspective. And all of the data will populate because the project hasn't been uh, commenced yet in terms of the construction, it is currently blank. However, you can customize these asset cards to pull out data as the project populates, which is quite cool. It makes your project management that much more easier using a bird's eye view methodology. Okay, so let's jump in here and we will then go to the admin stage. So as the consultant or as the person that's housing the data, you will be the administrator. As you can see, before we had added the survey and GIS proof professional, that being a name. And now we're going to add the contractor, which is going to be Noran. Okay, so all we got to do is add them as an e with their email address. We can give them a company name. So whichever contractors uh, they are, it can fully be added into the system. As you can see, I'm going to call this NE contractors. Keep it simple. And then, of course, we can select a role. Now, the cool thing with the role is you can have it uh, permission based. I can have as a construction manager or a contractor. In this case, I'm going to put it as a contractor. As you can see, I have assigned her access to Autodesk Docs as well as Build so that we can collaborate that much more better. She does not need design because that's for the consultants. And I can also take it away if I need to. So all I got to do is add her to the project and that is it. She is in the project. She will receive an email to say that she's added. And of course we have the apps that can work on Android and Apple. So a push notification can be sent directly to your pocket. I like calling it project in your pocket, right? So that's what we did. We've added her to the project and now the constructor is on board. The next thing we need to do is upload the construction drawings. Yes, you will still give the contractor three set of hard copies, but you can also upload the digital copies on here so that it can be made. It makes the tracking part that much more easier. So they can hang up the hard copies in their site offices and so on, but all of the communication should be done on here. So let's have a look. So as you can see, I'm in the document management stage, which is built into Autodesk Build, and we've got nothing in the roadway section. We had it under the project files. You can see these are the files, okay, that we created in part two. And there are four sheets in here, as you can see that. So it looks pretty neat, pretty cool. You can see everything looks quite legible, quite nice. And of course, you can customize this in terms of scale. You can see I didn't clean up some of the text to show you that you can actually check your design if needed. But all of the data is on there, as well as the title block information. Okay, so here we are. And I'm just toggling you through the title block because this is going to come quite handy when we're uploading the documents where we can extract that information automatically. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create or what, what it is called attributes. So I've already done a few. I'm just going to show you what or how I've done it. I've just clicked on add attribute. I can then give it a name depending on the details on my title block. So I can go to drawing type. I can use either a text field so I can type in something or I can use a date depending on what type of data I need to extract. And as you can see, drawing type has now been added to 
our attribute list. So now what we can do, we can upload the files with either of those buttons. I'm going to go select that sheet set. So we've got four sheets in there. I'll just close this quickly. Right, and open. And this is the process. You're going to upload the files. You're going to extract the information from the title blocks. You can review it and you're complete. So as you can see, it has it is currently uploading. Of course, the bigger you're drawing, the little more few seconds this will take, as well as it depends on your internet connection. All right. You can see I am gonna hit continue here. I can assign the sheet set if I want to. I can call this uh, construction documentation so that when I'm creating a submittal. Uh, so just a spoiler, it's coming up soon. We can actually pick up all of the documents that have a tag or an assignment set called issue for construction. This can be drawings, it can be normal Word documents, it can be a tender document, it can be anything that has this tag, if I could make it simple. And I can also put in the date that I'm going to be issuing it and so on. So here we are. It makes things much more tidy, especially when you're searching for things on the cloud platform. So as you can see, it's currently being processed. I can minimize this as it's going along, but here we are, it is done. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually define a title block. So you can see that it has extracted our sheets pretty nicely. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell the software to where to look for the information that I wanted to extract. So it uses OCR technology, standing for optical character recognition. You can just call it OCR, right? Keep it simple. And this is where the majority of my information that I want lies. So I can just draw a window over that. And here we are. So the software now knows where to look for my information. So I can give my title block a name. As you can see, I'm just zooming in at the bottom and I can pan a little bit. Uh, basic paint tools, right? So I'll just give this a name. So in this case, the paper size was A0. So I'm just going to say A0 road plan and profile. You can be much more descriptive with your title block names. Okay, so I will just type in here very quickly. And then I can go and tell the software which field corresponds to what attribute on my title block. So for example, that is my drawing number right there. And you can see it has picked it up on the left hand side. Same with the title. So I can go and define the title. So in this case, it was the construction of Trafalgar Road. Okay. And you can see it has picked it up. Now, if I wanted to add more, you can see all I got to do is click on select more attributes. And then I can select all of those that I have created. So there's one for scale. So I can go and just chop the scale data from there. I can go and add another one. And then I can go according to what I need. So you can't have duplicate names, just FYI, in terms of the fields. Um, I think the, the comic book fans will kind of get a feel of the names here for Marvel and DC. I'll just leave that up to you. I just thought I'll have a bit of fun. So here we are. I will go and take out Harley Quinn right there. So she's going to be the first drawn by. I was watching uh, Justice League and Marvel quite a bit at this time, so forgive me. Uh, and then we will go for Mary Jane. So as you can see, you can customize it as your title block requires you to. And automatically, this is going to be extracted for you. You don't have to go and define this. So let's go and grab Bruce Wayne. Okay, I think we've got just three more left. Uh, let's go to the second engineer. So Clark Kent, welcome. All right, so we've got that. I have included myself in here, so forgive me. All right, so here we are. I will just go to approval one. Uh, we'll just chop my name there very quickly. And then last but not least, I think we will go and select uh, Stark, right? Tony Stark or Anthony Stark, whatever you want to call it. So let's go and just chop that there. I just wanted to show you that if you don't 
figure it or if you don't crop it correctly it will chop out the letter so make sure that you go along it very quickly actually got two more fields so let's go to paper size very quickly now the cool thing with this is you do this process just once unless you you will need to do it for different paper sizes of course because the data is not going to be sitting exactly in the same space logically right and of course the drawing time i will i think do i have a feel for it let me see construction drawings that'll be perfect so here we are it's going to be construction drawings and as you can see i am making sure that all of the text fits in my crop box and that is it we hit save and automatically the extraction process will start kicking off this will take a few seconds or so again the larger your sheet set the little bit longer it will take but here we are and as you can see certain objects i did not crop properly so i can always go and edit it so that's a cool thing you can actually review your your extraction process good practice will be to do it properly first uh, but in this case, I just wanted to show you as the users that you can go and edit the data if needed. Okay, so if you don't crop it properly, you will need to go and type in each one or else you can just go and either cancel this and fix the cropping regions that we've just done. And yeah, it will extract as you're going along. So everything looks good. I'm going to go to publish all. And that is it. Now, the cool thing is we have all of our sheets that are now a part of our construction cloud and we can use that accordingly. So let's go have a look. You can see it was one PDF with four documents inside. So you don't have to upload them one by one. And here they are. So the cool thing here is also it does the versioning for you automatically. You can see that the versions are currently on version one. If there were any changes made, which I hope doesn't happen in construction, but it does, it will automatically version it to version two to show you that there is a later version. Uh, just a disclaimer, you would need to keep the drawing name exactly as you had it previously in order for the versioning to work. And as you can see, this is how it looks on the online platform. You can open this on your phone, on your browser. You don't need any of the softwares that I've used to actually view this, which is pretty cool. So now that we've extracted the sheets, what happens if we need to raise an issue? What if something's missing from a drawing or something doesn't look right and you need some more clarification? You can actually raise an issue. So let's jump in here. So let's say, for example, in this blank piece of paper, there was actually supposed to be a very uh, critical uh, standard detail, which is normally accustomed with road design. And as you can see, it gives me the whole paper trail of exactly what's happened digitally. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, create an issue. I can make it, I can customize it depending on what I want to. I can give it a title. And the great thing is I can actually assign it to the person that needs to fix it. So I'm just gonna place a pin in the area that I want them to look at, and I will give this issue and a title. So let's say, for example, a, I will call it missing detail, and I will assign it to myself in this case, right? Because I was the designer. Of course, if there were different designers, you will uh, submit to the correct person. You can see, I can also put the root cause depending on the stage it is. So I will just say, let's see what we design change. No, uh, but you can see there is a lot of options to choose from here, which you can also add. And let's say I will use documentation incomplete. That sounds fitting. And then of course I can add in a description as to what I mean. So I can say the standard detail was actually missing. Hit create. Once I hit create, I will receive an alert on my phone to say that something has been assigned to you. Please check it out. And I can just open the app and look at exactly where it is. Now, what the, the beauty of the marker is if you have a huge model or a huge, very busy uh, drawing, I can zoom out. And if I click on the issue, it will zoom in exactly to the area that I am talking about. 
So let's go to the issues tab. And as you will see, it will be listed in here. Now, I also gave it a due date. You can see it's way past that. And I can go and say, okay, this is the story. This is what's missing. And I can put in my response from that. So I can say, okay, detail included. So I put it in. I'm happy with it now. Um, so I probably missed that. I can put in the sheet number, for example. You can be more descriptive, okay, in terms of your, your drawings. And here we are. You can see the activity is also great for a project manager. You can actually log or see the log file of what actually has transpired. I can change the status to answered. And once the person is happy with it, they can close it if it meets their requirements. You can also void it if it has become a non-issue in the future. Okay, so I will just say, my bad, it has been added in another sheet, you didn't go and look into it, and that is it. So that's how you would raise an issue, quite simple, straightforward, really good, you can also export the issues that you have, and I can also do transmittals and reviews. Speaking of transmittals, let's jump right into that. So you've got all of your construction documents that you need to share with your contractor. So what I will do is, all I've got to do is go to the Transmodel tab and share it with the contractor. Simple as that. You can see there is nothing created here. So I will just say create Transmodel. I will go to the folder that I want or has the issue for construction drawings. In this case, I will just use the roadway. I can tick all the items. I can tick one depending on what I want. And then I can hit create. Now, you need to give it a name, of course. So I will say construction drawings and I can add recipients. So I just need to send it to the contractor. If you want to include other people just to say that they can see who received it, for example, like a CC in an email, you can always do that. And I will just say create. And that is it. Now the contractor, in this case, Nuran, will receive an email or a push notification to say, this has been shared with you and this is your transmitter from the consultant. And if you click on that transmitter, this is how it's going to look. It's going to look like a zip folder. And there's all of the drawings, who sent it to, what time you sent it, the date, and the person can either download it or they can view it on the browser as is or the app. So very simple, straightforward, easy to go. Okay, so that was a little bit on the collaboration part of things. The next thing is, how would you effectively manage and coordinate tasks on site? This becomes quite cumbersome. And RFIs are very useful as well as meeting minutes. So I'm gonna show you how you can actually use that in the construction phase. So an RFI stands for Request for Information. So let's have a look at how it looks. So I will go to my, I am currently in my project management tab. And I will, you can see we've got RFIs, we've done some methods already, and we've got meetings. So let's create an RFI. So I can create an open or a draft if I'm still working on it. I will leave it as open. And I need some information in terms of the grading of the site, okay? So again, I can assign it to whoever I want to, as well as, who needs to review it as well. So if you need more than one head on the project or on that issue, you can assign it, you can give it a date, and of course you can attach certain uh, documents or images. So if you're on site and maybe the grading didn't look quite good, uh, you can actually just walk out your phone, take a picture and add it to your cloud. In this case, I'm just gonna attach a drawing. As you can see, it will pick up just that sheet that I am interested in. And what I can do is go to the portion that I am talking about. So maybe on that curve, the grading doesn't look quite good. Maybe it's not, the embankment looks a bit too flat. For example, I can say whether it has a cost impact, schedule impact, of course, and whether what type of a priority it is. I can also select the discipline. So I will say it's civil and site. And I can put it in a category, so constructability. This is very important, especially if you're a consultant uh, 
monitoring the quality assurance on site from the contractor, or you need to report on the construction as it's going in terms of the quality. You can use all of this, you hit create, and the person that needs to be in charge of it will receive it. And as you can see, the RFI has been created. Simple as that, straightforward. If you click on it on your phone, this is how it's going to look. You can see we can assign a due date if we forgot about it, and so on. You can see also the drawing is clearly referenced. You can see all of the associated fields, and the foreman on site could actually take a picture, add it, submit an official response, and then they could either say it's void or they could close it when it comes back to you. So that's how you would use an RFI. Pretty handy, pretty instant, and it keeps you up to date with what needs to be done on site. The next thing is site meetings. So site meetings, let's have a look how awesome this is for our weekly meetings. So I would go to, generally you would go with your copies, hard copies, you will staple them, you will distribute them amongst the team. In this case, I will do everything on digital platform. We are all for digital transformation, right? So I'm just gonna go and create a meeting minutes here, and I will just give it a generic uh, name. I can say site meeting one, I can add the date, the location, I can give it a description. Uh, for example, let's think of one, I will just say maybe weekly meeting, right? And we can actually add things to discuss ahead of time. So when people come to the meeting, they can actually be prepared. Not only that, anything that needs to be done can be documented on here with a closed or a due date. This is a game changer, especially if you manage construction projects like I've done. It is quite nice to keep everything on track. So for example, we can add in the items we want to talk about. For example, I will put excavation. I can put the type of item. I can type all of those in. You can see I'm currently the organizers. Once the meeting is done, I can mark it as a minute. So you can populate this as you're doing your meeting. And I can also mark who attended. I can also invite more people. So all of the people that are needed. Also, if they are a non-member, which is quite cool. So if they're not on this platform, you can still add them to the meeting to show that they were referenced in this meeting. And of course, there's a Zoom meeting button where you can actually add the link for your video conference. So pretty nice on the management part of things. What about the physical work on site? How would you tick off tasks if you were the one or the foreman or someone that needs to do your snag lists and your claiming for rain days and those type of things? Let's have a look. So in this case, all we got to do is switch over to field management. Here we are. Okay, so this is Autodesk Build that you're seeing right now, pretty apt for the construction industry. And you can see there is a button called Checklist Issues and Daily Logs. Now I have already created one. I'm gonna show you how I did it, just to save time. So we need to go to Templates, and we would need to create a template. Now, if you create this on an admin level, you can reuse these checklists and edit them in future projects. Now, we can make a quality, a punch list, a safety list, or a commissioning list. Pretty flexible, okay? So in this case, I'm going to use a punch list. We call it snags. And we can then go and put in the type of issues that we would need to do if they need to be assigned any. All right? So, of course, we need to assign it to the contractor in this case. And the owner will be the consultant, which is me. I can also create a field to say whether it's conforming to spec or not. I can add template information later, but these are all of the attributes that you have. We would need to give it a name, of course. I will just write here example because I've created one for you to have a look at already. And this is where you can populate your list. So you can give it a section name. You can choose the type of indicator that you want whether it's checkboxes, whether it's pass or fail, whether it's yes, no, maybe. And the person can literally fill this out on their phone, simply as checking on it. So generally from a QMS perspective, policy management system that you normally, a civil engineer or civil consultant firm will be audited on for compliance in terms of BSI. 
This is very important, right? Because normally all of your hard copies need to be in your file. But what if you can have it on a digital platform, which is much more safe, right? So let's go have a look at the checklist that I have created. So using the same options that I've showed you, I've created one for the road. So for example, we've got all of these uh, main headers and of course, all of the bottom or related items. So you can see the person on site can raise an issue. They can say yes or no. They can add a photo. All of this can be incorporated all on one platform. That's why you should have heard this term, the single source of truth. This is literally what a common data environment sets out to achieve. So here we are, this is what you can do. Of course, you can go in much more detail on different things. You can see I've, I'm showing you different options here. You can tick off the things that have currently been completed. Uh, for example, stop signs in under road marking and so on. So you can mark it as done or you can just tick it out, keep it on your phone. And then when it's done, you can complete or submit it. And of course, you can use the photo option, which is a really handy one from site. Okay, so you can also select the types. You can say whether things are true or false, or whether you did reform the site, common uh, contamination, and of course, overall site condition. So if you need to type something, <laughs> hey, right, you can actually type it in there. You can also choose a date when certain thing would be completed. So for example, we envisaged a certain date for handover. And of course, you can also type in the duration if you need a number. Okay, so, and then of course, if you need people to sign off on certain things, you can add digital signatures, which is quite cool. And you can actually sign that in, put in your name, company. So this is purely digital. We're not dealing with paper anymore. And it makes it that much more better. And it keeps everything all on one platform. We can also create daily site logs. So you can monitor your site every day. You can enter the location, what your labor force looks like, the hours spent. And of course, you can also uh, give it different names and you can publish it as you're going along and it will populate as you're seeing there. So for example, you can see I've got uh, rain throughout the day, humid, the degrees, where the location is, all of those things. And you can see the audit trail on the right hand side. I've also added the labor as well as the working hours. And I've also, just to say proof of the rain, I have added a photo. So you can see how great this is if you are in a construction team, right? Makes life very, very easy and it keeps all of the teams, be it design or construction or finance or whatever, all on the same page. Now, here is uh, a really uh, functional or very, one of my favorite features in the cloud platform, which is sending out reports. Now, <laughs> if you've managed projects, you do know that on a certain day, it could be every Thursday, every Friday or so, you would need to send out a lot of reports, either to the client, either to the team, just to track projects. And life and work being as it is, it becomes tasks that you commonly miss. What if you could auto schedule it? So let's have a look. So here we are on my dashboard. And if I go to the inside tab, just to show you from a project management level, construction management level, you have everything that is segmented for you automatically, which is pretty unreal. I mean, to get all of this data, it just as the bird's eye view, is quite hard. But what we're looking at is the reports. So here we are. You can see, I have, for example, I've got a checklist that I've done and I want to create a report. So I can do different types of reports, whether it be on issues, request for information, checklists, anything that have been raised, uh, depending on what has happened on site, I can run them. And the cool thing is I will export it as a PDF, which is universally used. I can select what type I want. I can add this by status. Status is quite cool to show you the progress. You can also export certain types of aspects. So in this case, I did a QA a checklist. There's the one that I had created. And of course, you can populate this as it's going. Okay, so all of this can be filtered out. These are all filtered fields. 
and you can actually add how in the last so many number of days or the n number of days what has happened so you can also add a specific date range in this case i will just keep it in the last seven days and i want the active data what is actually happening on my uh, project i can also share and schedule it so now i will say who needs to receive this report i can also do it by role as you can see there and i can also share it with others i can type in other email addresses and at the bottom i can go and schedule it so i can say every week this needs to go out or on the first of every month and once i hit run now every time every week this happens on this date those reports will be pushed out to the team automatically that has now zero human intervention you just have to set it up first and that is it it will keep recurring as long as you allow it so just to show you how the report looks you'll see you get an email for example to say so the teams will say hey this is what's happening this is the report for this week i will download it and this is how it looks so once it's downloaded i can just hit open and you can see this is how it looks in this case it's quite a short one but you get the idea everything that you want so if you wanted a pdf of it you got all of the details and it actually shows you whose signatures were required and none of us signed it right because it wasn't complete okay so we've done all of the management tools now for the fun part right 4d construction simulation i have had a lot of inquiries on, of this on linkedin people getting confused they've seen my previous webinars but still not coming right as well as a lot of the other webinars that are out there i have tried to make it as simple as possible so please hit me up in the chat box to say if you came right or not i'll be very curious to see your comments so i have broken it out it is a three-step process the first step is to export your road corridor to solids let's have a look so this was our civil 3d model you can see there is our corridor and all i got to do is select the corridor and hit extract corridor solids now it will give you options i'm going to use by station range and i will select the region that i want to extract so you can see here it is already telling me region one and when I click on the corridor, you will see that there's a red line asking me from which station to start off from. Now you could have done the entire road. You can see I use zero to 50 at the bottom. And there we are. It has extracted it as I want. Now this is very important. It's a bit of a tedious process if you've got a long road, but it's definitely worth it. Now we're gonna change the naming. Pay very close attention to this. We're going to use a construction region name as well as the code set it is assigned to. If you use Civil 3D, you know what I'm talking about. All right. So here we are from 0 to 50, it has extracted everything. I can go and customize the colors here, or we can do it in Navisworks, which I'm going to show you. Okay. And I'm going to add the next region. So I will repeat the process. So all I'm going to do is select the corridor again. Okay, so I will say station range, and here we are. So I will type in 50, right? So I will hit enter, and I will put in the end change of 100, and here we are. So we've got 50 to 100, and you will keep repeating this process. Make sure that the correct uh, name is, or layered name template is used, okay? And I've done this for the entire road for this webinar. So here we are. This is the completed option. So I thought I will do it properly so that you get an idea of how it looks. And as you can see, I've done it at 50 increments. You could do it at 100. You could do it at 200. It all depends on your construction program. So if you're doing 100 meters of road in two weeks, you will break it up in 100 and so on like that. So use your project management experience here, construction management experience here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this to a new drawing. A lot of people make this mistake and include it in the original file. I will just call this Navis Detail DWG and I will hit Extract Solids. That's it. That is it. 
So we have now extracted the solids and let's go have a look at how it looks. So I will go hit open and I will go to my DWG that I've just exported. And this is the result. It'll take a bit of a few seconds or so, depending on the length of the road. You will need to zoom extents like I've done. And if I zoom in, you can see all of those segments are now individual. So if I hop over it, you can see they're not combined anymore. So those are 3D solids that we are needing in conjunction with our construction program. So I'm making it very clear. I've used 50 because I'm using it for this example where I thought, okay, 50 increments will be quite cool. You would need to tie up with your construction program. So just keep that in mind. The second step is to create a construction program in Excel. This is where a lot of people actually got lost. I've simplified it much more better. So here I am in Navisworks, and I'm going to bring in that DWG that we have just extracted to solids. Now, if you don't have MS projects or something like that, or you want to create it from your model directly, this is the approach I am using. First of all, you can see the colors don't look that great. Of course, it doesn't play, play a role, especially if you are just interested in the simulation. But we like making things look a bit better here, right? But you can see all of the regions came through accordingly from that corridor. Now, what we will need to do, if you want to override the materials, which is much more quicker here than in Civil 3D, we can go use the find command in Navisworks. So here we are. You can see all of the stuff is in here. I can go and select the filter that I want to use. So let's just make these columns a bit bigger so you can see what's going on. So this is the approach I applied. I'll be interested to hear what you normally do or if you even knew you could do this. So I will select the shape from the corridor. I will link it to the code name. I will use programming to say equal. And I, for example, want pave one because I know pave one is my asphalt. So again, you need to know your civil 3D model. Very, very important. As you can see, there's highlighted the entire asphalt layer. And I can go and override it. Again, this is purely for simulation, OK? So it looks nice. And if I hit OK, here we are. You can see it has become black asphalt. And you can repeat the process with the associated uh, geometry elements. So for example, I can go and say, I want to change, let's say, the curve, the curving, right? So I'll find all, same process. As you can see, it has highlighted everything. And I can just say override. So we will just override that color. I think I just unclicked there. Let's just do this again. Find all, right click. Let's go to override. And I can assign a color. So maybe a light gray. I was thinking of going white, but let's go light gray. OK, so let's click here. I'm sure your color schemes or your creativity is way higher than mine, so you can decide, right? And you can see it has adjusted it. Uh, let's just do it for a few more, or let's see. Let's just toggle the view a little bit. And as you can see, these are individual components. All right, let's do it for a few more, so this will make more sense in the third step. So let's just set it up quite nicely. So here's the sidewalk. I am going to override that color. So currently, I'm only doing the uppermost layers, the layers that you would see once the road has been constructed. OK, you can see that. And the banking, let me just leave it for now. All right, I will do that in the, for the next video, but you get the gist. OK, so we've assigned the colors. Now, what we need to do is go to the timeline. Now, if you don't see it at the bottom, like what you're seeing here, it is on your menu bar. So I will click it. And as you can see, there's an option here that's called auto add tasks. I'm going to use it for every topmost layer. Now, you can see it has put in a first guess of what the construction is. Now, I'm going to export it to CSV. So that's all I'm doing, nothing else. I'm not editing anything in here. 
And this is how it looks in a, an Excel sheet or a CSV sheet. Let's expand the columns. And here we are. You can see all of these data comes in. Some of these columns you can actually delete because you wouldn't need it, but it gives you quite a comprehensive. If you want to go 5D, you can add labor and equipment costs, material costs, those type of things. So 5D is when you include, include the construction cost. I left that out because it's the same process as doing the 4D, same principle. You can see plan start, plan end, and you've also got an actual start and actual end. So you can actually compare what's happening on site versus what you thought would happen. So you would need to go through this Excel sheet. You need to edit it according to your dates in your construction program. Make sure that the sequence is correct. So for example, in mine, this looks wrong. That shouldn't be there. That comes towards the end of the intersection. So I need to ensure that the order is correct and so on like that. So I've done that intentionally. So I hope that you can pick that up. Okay, and then last but not least, it is run 4D simulation in Navisworks. I think majority of you tuned in to see how this would look. I did it quite cool where I did it per layer. So you could see per layer. So I added some other colors in here to the, the pavement layers that you could not see. Okay, so I will go in and toggle on my timeliner. I will just pull it in from my other screen. Yes, you can have it on a separate screen. It doesn't have to be docked. And this is what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go import that edited CSV sheet as per my construction program. And all I've got to do is map the columns with the columns in Navisworks. So I've done that, hit OK. And then I will rebuild the task hierarchy. And as you can see, all of my data has come in along with the Gantt chart on the right hand side. Now, what I will do is I will attach, right? So auto attach using rules. I will just tick all of them for now. And it will use the labeling to attach the correct element. That's why it is very important that you do it correctly when you set up the naming template. And if I hit play, check what's happening here. Let's zoom in, All right? So you can see that is the second layer or the, the base. Then we've got the sub base. Then we've got the banking. I've then decided that I'm gonna put in the curb and then I'm gonna put in the asphalt last, okay? So pretty cool. So if I had to say, stop this after one month, I could actually see where I should be on site. Not only that, I can always play this backwards, but before we get into that, we can go to the settings. Now, I can edit the text if I want certain data to, to present itself. So currently I've got date and time. I can go to colors, I can do extras. So I can either put in the number of dates, the percentage sign, all of those things. So it uses uh, coding for this, right? So it's just a visual text line or script. You can add that in, and then we can also edit the type of text that we want. So currently it's Tahoma. I'm gonna change it to Arial. Okay, so let's just type in Arial. I can also decide whether I want it to be narrow, bold, italic, whatever I want to. In this case, I'm just gonna go bold. I'll leave the text size as it is, hit okay, and hit okay. And as you can see, it has adjusted on my screen. Now let's hit play. Again, this is going backwards. So here we are, All right? So you can see I've actually colored those layers, different colors. So you can actually see the amount of detail you can go into for this simulation, All right? Actually, this is going forward, my, my apologies. And you can see everything gets constructed as you're going along. So that's how you would do a 4D simulation. If we had to toggle the view, uh, let's just run this one more time. So I'll just use my orbit tool here very quickly so we get a nice uh, angle or top view that we would use. Let's just do it maybe like that, zoom in, and that is it. So you can see it even tells you what day it is, a week, whatever, how many percent it is done. Again, you can play it backwards. So if I do hit play backwards, 
you'll see it goes backwards, <laughs> literally, right? So you can see that top layer is coming off. You can see the weeks are going off and so on. And we are just stripping the road as we are going. And you can see it's actually staggered. So uh, once you put in the first layer and you compact, after a certain amount of changes, you will start with the second layer and so on. So pretty detailed and, and it is it works wonders. I mean, just look at it. You can see there's the stagger I was talking about, the orange layer comes up as the other one is progressing. Same with the rest of it. And if you haven't seen an intersection being done in Navisworks, there it is right there. So the curbs have been put in, I mean, the bell marks have been put in, top layer curb has been laid, and that is the results. And then, of course, you can export that animation if you'd like. I will export it and share it on LinkedIn after this webinar, maybe next week sometime. So last but not least, it is the Asbold part of things. How would you manage this? Now, let me explain. You have two options, <laughs> I have given in my own names, the traditional method or the futuristic method. So option one, so the surveyor, as the road has been constructed, he checks the layers, he, he checks the levels, he gets the data, and then also on completion, he makes sure that everything is up to scratch in terms of construction. He'll give you that data in terms of a CAD layout. This is typically a DWG, a DXF, and a PDF, as well as the survey data. It could be land XML, text, CSV, uh, whatever uh, software is using. That data is then imported into the construction model, and then the alignment needs to be adjusted, right? Saved as, and then the sheets are produced and handed over. This process is exactly the same as what we did in part two where we change the survey data from InfraWorks to the survey data received at the detailed design. So you bring in all of that, you import those profiles, and then you can actually create a profile from, uh, from text, which is quite amazing, and you have the as book elevation of your alignment. So you've got the center line, left edge, and right edge. So pretty cool way, it works, it is good. So you can go that way. The second way of being futuristic, option two, again, this could be done by either a surveyor or a service provider that will use a drone or a laser scanner to actually capture the extent of the road. Uh, drones or UAVs are the ideal option because you will literally program the flight path and you will just fly along the road. That scan data can then be produced into an RCP file you get the, the point cloud data, and then that you can import that into InfraWorks. Now in InfraWorks, what you can do is, because of the detail that's captured in the, in the point cloud, you can use linear extraction technology that's built into InfraWorks to extract the profiles for you. So the ECW profiles, you can extract that. Pretty nice. Then you can take that into Civil 3D, extract uh, or create a surface from point cloud, and then you will follow the steps highlighted in part two. So whichever way you're going, both work. The cool thing with option two is you can actually give the point cloud data to the client as well. So you have a 3D representation of the site. This is my opinion. If you're doing it any other way, please let me know in the chat box. And that is it. Let's look at the key takeaways as well as how we can help you. So today's key takeaways, use cloud technologies. Simple as that. Embrace the common data environment. It is becoming, it is a world standard. And if we adopt it much more better, you can already gauge the benefits that you've seen here in the webinar. It's absolutely amazing. It, make, it increases transparency, fluidity in the project cycle, as well as accountability. So you will get things done when you need them to be done. Right. You can create checklists, snag lists, quality, punch lists, and you can literally fill them out on your phone. Another handy trick is on the mobile app, you've got voice to text recognition. So if you're using those construction gloves, I got you, I've been there, just voice note into it, into your phone, it will transfer it to text and just hit send. Then, of course, 4D construction simulation. 
you've seen how great this is to monitor progress. You can also edit it. I showed you, showed you the three steps that you would need to incorporate for this. Uh, the methodology is the same with buildings, okay? And of course, you can schedule reports so that you don't have to send them out every week. Last but not least, as builds can be done either using the same process we used in part two or using laser scanning or UAV technologies. So series complete, congratulations everyone. And I see a lot of you have joined from part one, which I'm really chuffed about, so thank you. And this is brings us to the end of another awesome civil series. Thank all of you for making it really good and enjoyable and keeping me going. And speaking of that, from all of this data that you've learned, how can we help you? Being the company that we are, we live by this, where we solve our customers' problems through digital transformation. You can see I am a big advocate for it in the civil industry, where we help you to design and make a better world. We use this using our consulting methodology, so we can assess you, we can educate you, or we can partner and consult with you. So if something is above your, thresh your threshold or it's a bit new, we can help you with it to enforce positive change management and digital transformation in your company. So we look at your people, your processes, your technologies, and this is what we call the I adopt framework, which is purely our secret source. Uh, we do business assessments, we do training, implementations, data management, consulting, and much more. If you'd like to get in touch with us, those are all of our handles over there. We are on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, as well as YouTube. So connect with us, uh, keep in touch with us. We are very active online, especially with current circumstances. Online is the way to go to keep in contact with whoever you are, right? We have, or we post a really awesome support desk. So all of our clients, we offer them support from Monday to Friday. 8 a.m. to half past 11 at night. That is quite insane. And those are our details there. We've got two offices, like you can see there, Cape Town, as well as our head office here in Johannesburg. Of course, if you want to reach out to me, anything civil infrastructure design, I am sure Abunus, hit me up. We can talk, we can chat. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. If you want to reach out to me on email, there is my email address. Again, all of our recordings, irrespective of civil infrastructure, architecture, manufacturing, all of our professionals, all of our webinars are on our Make a Bates YouTube channel. So please subscribe, like, and share, or refer your buddy to it in case they've missed a few sessions that you thought might be useful. If you wanna get into product focus, these are all of the things that you can contact me from. It's quite a stack. Uh, primarily, it's on the civil uh, part of things secondary more on the vertical construction or build space laser scanning you can also talk to me about i'm quite apt at that and if i had to sum it up i could help you with training it could be customized it could be project based or it could be partnering with your company and doing a pilot project as well as can to bim consulting and process analysis if there's any uh, consulting that you are doing on a project that you need our expertise on, you can reach out to us, as well as presenting and doing demos. So if you're probably hosting an event or you'd like us to show the technologies to your company, to your firm, we are more than welcome uh, or available to help you out with that. So kindly reach us. And of course, webinars and having a chat. I always, I'm very active on LinkedIn. I have a good idea what's going on in the industry. You guys hearing what's troubling you. And I try to shape my webinars to accommodate to that. So that was a lot of talking from my end. I am going to open it up to the Q&A session. So if you have any comments of the series, if you have anything that's popped up, what you're seeing here, uh, now is your chance to pop them in the chat box uh, while I go through what I currently have. So. Uh, now's your chance, fire away, what you thought of the series, what you thought of this webinar, anything you want to see in the future, let me know. So let's have a look at the questions. Okay, I see majority of them is on the 4D construction simulation. 
and I'm reading them right now and they all are kind of asking the same thing. Okay, so I'm gonna sum it up here, right? So the questions are regarding which project management tool to use in terms, I would understand that as whether you use Excel, MS projects or whatever, I'll get to that just now. The other one is, can you automate the process for the corridor extraction? I'll get to that again. And I'm trying to make sense of this one. Can you assign material? Okay, so there it is. Let's go to the first one. So the first one was about which software would you normally use for project management? Now, generally, uh, project managers, they would use Microsoft projects, most popularly used from ex well, exp my experience. I see them used quite a bit. The reason being is the functionality with the Gantt chart. Okay, so you can use your start and finish, finish to start, all of those type of codings in Microsoft projects. So it makes scheduling that much more better. And also most consultants use it. Can you link it to your Navisworks program? Absolutely. Navisworks is compatible with Excel, with MS projects, as well as Primavera. So those are all of the bases covered when you're coming to construction scheduling. Uh, the second one was, can you automate the corridor extraction? No. The reason being is we can't really automate it because it needs to be linked to a construction program and everyone's construction program will be different. It could have a lot of factors into it, the length of the road, all of the uh, associated infrastructure with it. So you would need to have an understanding of what your construction program looks like. Then you go to your model, you will extract the corridor based on those segments. I hope that answers your question. In this example, I used 50 meters. Of course, you will use different segments and you will have a lot of tasks working in concurrency. So they will be working at the same time, on the same dates, maybe on different parts of the road. So you need to look at all of that. This is where your construction program management or your site management comes into play. Uh, if you're not sure of it, best to check with your contractor, asking for a method statement or check with someone that's senior to you, get that idea and then give it a shot. And the third one was about the materials. So, the materials meaning, can you assign materials to it? I get where this is coming from. This is more an AutoCAD based question. Yes, you can. We just use colors for this example. But if you go into your color library and you assigned like a concrete finish, you assign an asphalt finish, you might have different materials, whether it's ceramic, metal, you can add all of those onto that. But from my experience, what I've seen is colors is great. It does the job for a simulation and getting the idea across where the project needs to be, where it has to be, and where you currently are. But if you want to be fancy, you're more than welcome to go and add that into that. I see a lot of people saying that it made much more sense right now. Thank you very much. I'm really happy with that. Uh, if you do get stuck, the recording again is going to be on our YouTube channel. So please go and subscribe so you can go and watch it in a much more slower pace if needed. Um, I always get this at the end of each uh, webinar series. What is the next one? This time, I really don't know. So if you have any suggestions for me, send it on email, send it on LinkedIn. Uh, I am open to ideas. I haven't figured that one out already. This was a really cool one from tender to construction. The next one, I'm not sure whether it's going to be on roads or civils. You will just have to wait as well as I. And I think that is it. I'm just going to make one more scroll on the question and answer box. If I haven't missed anyone. No, everyone is done and dusted. So great. Thank you all for a, an awesome series. Thank you for keeping me going. I hope it made a lot of sense. And I hope that you become much more intelligent and efficient on your road projects right from inception stage up to 
as well. Have a great Friday, everyone. Catch you for the next series and keep safe out there.